Welcome back to another episode where we dive into the deep, dark depths of pop culture to find the hidden gems. We are back! That's we right. are back! Or in this case, to figure out why Amazon decided to set a billion dollars on fire. That's right, folks. We're talking about The Rings of Power Season 2, the show that somehow manages to make Middle Earth look incredible while simultaneously making us not care about anything happening in it. Uh, no, I was recently diagnosed with uh, stage four. I don't give a shit. Buckle up, because we're about to dissect this shiny disaster in all its expensive glory. So, episode one kicks things off by reminding us of all the odd choices made in season one. You know, because nothing says welcome back, like the showrunners admitting they had no idea what they were doing the first time around. We start with Sauron, who's now seen from his own perspective. And let me tell you, it's just as confusing from his angle. Imagine trying to figure out why you're following some random dude on a boat to nowhere, knowing full well there's nothing out there but water and bad plot decisions. I mean, come on, guys. We get it, Sauron's evil, but do we really need the lighting budget to reflect the blackness of his soul? Then we have the moment where Sauron gets Caesared like it's a Shakespearean tragedy, except it makes about as much sense as a Mordor vacation brochure. I mean, Adar knows Sauron can't be killed, right? And yet here we are, stabbing away like this is going to fix all of Middle-earth's problems. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. But don't worry, Sauron's resurrection scene is here to save the day. Kinda. Apparently, putting together a new body for Sauron is like assembling IKEA furniture. Time-consuming, frustrating, and ultimately leaving you with a few pieces that don't seem to fit anywhere. And while we're on this, can we please address the sludge thing? Because if that's all that's left of Sauron's spirit, I think I've seen more threatening things in my kitchen sink. Moving on to episode two, where things are supposed to get better, and they do, slightly. Woohoo! Like the difference between stepping in a puddle and stepping in quicksand. Both suck, but one just slightly less. We dive into the mysterious rune subplot where the stranger continues to be mysterious, Gandalfy, and slightly less interesting than watching paint dry. But hey, at least this part of the story isn't based on anything Tolkien actually wrote, which means the showrunners can't mess it up too badly. Yet. I'm not dead! What? Nothing is in I'm I'm not dead! Of course, this is where the show's geography takes a nosedive. The stranger and Poppy walk five miles, and it feels like they've been trekking across Middle-earth for weeks, while Sauron somehow rides from Mordor to Eregion faster than Amazon's same-day delivery. Must go faster. Seriously, I need whatever horse he's riding because my commute could use a little of that magic. Let's not forget the sheer confusion over distances and timelines. One minute we're in Linden, the next we're in Eregion. And before you can say, didn't we just leave that place? We're in some other random location where messengers are getting picked off by something. It's like the writers threw a dart at a map of Middle Earth and decided that's where the next scene should be. Yo, where are you going? Episode three rolls around. And by now, by, by now, in Numenorean politics. <laughs> a thrilling subject if you're into watching people bicker about things we can't even understand. I mean, I get that Game of Thrones made political intrigue cool, but here it's like watching a debate between two brick walls. Why are they anti-elf? Who knows? Who cares? Certainly not the writers, because they never bothered to explain it. I don't know what we're yelling about! Loud noises! And what about the geography? I know I've mentioned it, but this show's sense of distance is like a drunk GPS. Arondir saves Isildur, and in the next breath, he's standing at Bronwyn's funeral pyre miles away. Either he's got teleportation powers, or the editors are just messing with us at this point. Bro, come on! So, here we are, three episodes in, and I'm left wondering, who is this show even for? It's like they made this billion-dollar spectacle for an audience that doesn't exist. Too slow for the casual fans, too inaccurate for the Tolkien purists, and too confusing for everyone in between. It's like Amazon decided to create a fantasy show for the three people on Earth who actually enjoyed the extended editions, but found them too short. Yeah, all three of them.
In conclusion, if you're the kind of person who's been waiting all your life to see Tom Bombadil in all his weird, whimsical glory, congratulations, this show is for you. What do you think, Nerd Town? Did you love it? Hate it? Are you as confused as I am? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss out on more snarky deep dives into the wonderful world of overpriced fantasy TV. Until next time.